In the annals of 1950s creature features, the giant Gila monster occupies a unique niche, both emblematic of its era, and a cult classic in the realm of B-movies. This low-budget sci-fi thriller, directed by Ray Kellogg, unfurls a tale of a colossal reptilian menace terrorizing a small Texas town. Released in 1959, the film boasts the quintessential elements of its genre rubbery special effects, a dash of teen drama, and a hefty dose of Cold War-inspired atomic anxiety. Amidst the charm of its vintage special effects and the earnest performances of its cast, one can't help but wonder, has the cinematic relic left an indelible mark on your life? Can you recount the personal story where the giant Gila monster ignited a spark of inspiration? or left a lasting impact? Or perhaps, do you harbor lesser known facts or anecdotes about the production that captivate your interest? Now, let's delve into some captivating trivia about the film. For instance, did you know that the Gila monster itself was portrayed by a live Mexican beaded lizard, a species unrelated to the actual Gila monster? The filmmakers opted for this unconventional choice to enhance the creature's menacing presence on screen. Another interesting tidbit is the film's budget constraints, leading to the creative use of remote-controlled model cars in the explosive car chase scenes. As we reminisce about this bygone era of monster movies, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the giant Gila monster. We invite you to share your stories and recollections in the comments below. Whether it's a nostalgic encounter with the film on late night television or a vivid memory of the first time you witnessed the lumbering Gila monster on screen, your tales add depth to the legacy of this cinematic gem. Share your thoughts and memories with us. The car chase drives in the 1959 movie The Giant Gila Monster was owned by a local farmer and drag racer named John Mulkey. He won the B Street Roadster class at the 1958 NHRA Nationals with this car, which ran a small block Chevy Massage to 302 cubic inches and reached 105.5 miles per hour in the quarter mile. The car has undergone various changes and owners over the years but still exists today. This iconic car wasn't the only interesting detail in the film. The radio station mentioned at the Sock Hop, Kilt, was a significant regional top 40 station in Houston, TX, purchased by producer Gordon McLendon in 1957. Notably, Gay McLendon and Jan McLendon are related to Gordon, and about the titular Gila monster in the movie. It's not an actual Gila monster, but a Mexican beaded lizard. These facts shed light on some intriguing aspects behind the scenes of the 1959 movie The Giant Gila Monster. From the car's drag racing history to the connection with a prominent radio station and the true identity of the monster itself. These details offer a unique perspective on the production and the people involved, adding depth to the cinematic experience. Gordon McLendon, a Texas-based owner of radio stations and theaters, played a significant behind-the-scenes role in the 1959 film The Giant Gila Monster. Despite being the uncredited executive producer and financier of the movie, McLendon also lent his voice as the narrator at the film's beginning. What adds an interesting twist is the involvement of McLendon's family members in the film, with some being given roles. A movie, part of a double feature alongside The Killer Shrews, marked one of the few independent productions in Texas to achieve national distribution. This distinction sets it apart from many similar Southern productions of the time. Ken Knox, who portrayed disc jockey Horatio Alger Steamroller Smith, brought authenticity to his role as he was a real disc jockey working in Texas radio stations owned by McLendon. This connection between the film and the radio industry in Texas adds an intriguing layer to the narrative. In summary, the 1959 film The Giant Gila Monster not only captivates with its on-screen giant lizard spectacle, but also reveals a fascinating backdrop of Texas radio, family connections, and the independent film scene of its time. The decision to cut a scene from the giant Gila monster, where old man Harris meets his demise in the clutches of the titular creature, brings an intriguing layer of mystery to the film. The scene's existence, though deleted, is subtly hinted at through the footage of Harris running up the barn stairs. This omission leaves viewers with an unanswered question, adding an element of suspense to the storyline. The choice to exclude this potentially intense moment raises curiosity about the director's vision and the impact it might have had on the overall narrative. It's a subtle detail that lingers in the background, 
contributing to the film's enigmatic charm. The giant Gila monster holds more than just its on-screen spectacle. It conceals untold stories within its editing choices, keeping audiences engaged with the unseen, unspoken, and the unshow. Intriguing, isn't it? Executive producer Gordon McLendon not only financed, but also lent his voice to radio spots in the 1959 film The Giant Gila Monster. His influence extends beyond the financial realm, shaping the auditory experience with his opening narration. McLendon's multifaceted involvement, including voicing radio spots and narrating the film, adds a distinctive touch to the movie's production. Moreover, a subtle connection arises as Ken Curtis, producer and renowned for his role as Festus Hagen in Gunsmoke, lends his voice in a pivotal phone call scene. These behind-the-scenes details showcase the collaborative efforts that shaped the film's audio landscape, revealing the interconnected roles of key figures. Dive deeper into the giant Gila monster's auditory tapestry, exploring the impact of McLendon and Curtis in crafting a unique sonic atmosphere within the 1959 film. Unravel the layers of production intricacies that contribute to the film's distinctive charm. Originally released as a double feature with the Killer Shrews in 1959, the giant Gila monster shares an interesting production connection. Both films were produced by Ken Curtis, known for his role as Festus Hagen in Gunsmoke. This double feature release marked a notable moment in Texas independent filmmaking, achieving national distribution at a time when such success was a rarity in the region. Beyond its cinematic achievements, the giant Gila monster gained further recognition when it became the subject of riffing on Mystery Science Theater 3000 in the second episode of season four. The show, known for its humorous commentary on B-movies, added another layer to the film's legacy. These details provide a unique lens into the film's distribution strategy and cultural impact, showcasing the collaborative efforts of key figures like Ken Curtis and the unexpected recognition it received on a popular TV show. Explore the dual feature release and the film's appearance on Mystery Science Theater 3000, uncovering how these elements contributed to the broader narrative of the giant Gila monster and its place in cinematic history. As the credits roll on the timeless reel of the giant Gila monster, let the echoes of 1959 transport you to an era where creature features ruled the silver screen. Did the suspense send shivers down your spine, or did the charmingly practical effects evoke a nostalgic grin? However this classic struck the chords of your cinephile heart, let its essence linger. Now, dear reader, it's your turn to step into the spotlight. Unearth your memories, brush off the cinematic dust, and share your personal odyssey with this monstrous masterpiece. Were you perched on the edge of your seat, engulfed in the primal fear of a giant reptilian marauder? Or perhaps the quirky charm of 50 seconds Americana left an indelible mark, echoing through the corridors of your cinematic soul? In this celluloid dance between past and present, your thoughts become the protagonist. Did the giant Gila monster carve out a pocket of nostalgia in your heart, or is it a cinematic gem you've just unearthed? Share your reflections, memories, and musings with fellow enthusiasts, for in this communal celebration of celluloid, every perspective is a star in the cinematic constellation. Thank you for embarking on this journey through time and film your presence enriching the narrative tapestry woven by the giant Gila monster. As the credits fade, remember, the magic endures in the stories we share.